Whether dueling is what you originally set out to do in Diablo 2 Resurrected, or whether you're just looking for something different to do after you found all the items that your heart desires, some good old player versus player can be pretty enjoyable in Diablo 2 Resurrected. A lot of people have been asking me about what types of items that they should aim for or try to collect along the way. So in this video, I'm gonna look at 10 of the top items that I suggest to a lot of people. These items that we'll talk about today are not only good for likely the PVP build that you want to make, but also they're good for so many of them that you're not really pigeonholed into one build when you get them. So without further ado, let's dive into this list and talk about my top 10 items that I would suggest getting for player versus player in D2R. Number one is Storm Shield. You can actually pick these up on the cheap. Uh, you might have already found one of these already. And believe it or not, this item is actually really good in player versus player. The best way to absorb damage in PvP is to not get hit in the first place. There's many different setups that require or really just benefit from having max block. This shield not only has a really high block percent on it, but it also has that nice added ability of damage reduced by 35%. In any build that you're going to need max block for, you're probably also going to want to reduce the amount of physical damage that you take. For example, if you're going up against an Amazon or a Barbarian, you know, they're going to want to hit you with a physical attack. So the fact that this shield has a high block percent and a very nice bonus to damage reduced by is really good. When you consider the fact that the damage reduced by mechanic in PVP is capped at 50%, this takes care of a good portion of that just on its own. So if you get a storm shield, you may find that you're using it on not just one, but a variety of different setups for many different characters that you could build. It's a very, very highly desired item in PVP. And speaking of shields, let's move on to the second item in the list. Spirit. Spirit is a very nice rune word. Some might even argue that it's OP in a lot of regards. This is a very cheap item to make. You likely already have one of these if you've progressed through the game and done any amount of magic finding in the end game. But believe it or not, this simple item actually has a lot of good things that pay off quite a bit in PvP. One attribute that a lot of people overlook is the high amount of faster hit recovery that exists on this shield. Whenever you have an opponent that is trying to hit you, that's trying to, you know, attack you with very, very high damage attacks, that will automatically most times put you into hit recovery animation. So it's important to be able to recover from that quickly. Additionally, there's a huge boost to mana and to life and obviously some resistance is on there as well. Depending on the roll that you get on the faster cast rate that spawns on it, that can really help you min-max certain builds. Additionally, this can be made in Paladin Shields and the value of it can go up substantially depending on the base that you have. For example, this can be made in a Paladin Shield called the Sacred Targe. And if you have a decent roll with uh, base all resistances on that item, that can actually transfer between a lot of different Paladin builds that you use in PvP. Not just a Hammered In, but some Smiters use Spirit, some VTs or Vindicators use it as well. It's just a very good item all around. And that is not to mention all of the casters that are using it, from Necros to Druids to Sorceresses, you name it. There's so many different builds. And by the very least, a lot of people use this on their swap with the next item on this list. And that is call to arms. This rune word requires an ohm rune, which may be a bit hard for some people to track down, but when you do, I would highly suggest making this rune word. This rune word gives any character class the ability to cast battle command and battle orders. This will temporarily increase your skill levels through battle command and will substantially increase your life and mana through battle orders. It's almost a no-brainer for a pre-buff on a lot of builds and as we spoke about it is actually boosted by the plus to skills on spirit. The more items that you have that have a generic plus one or plus two or plus three to skills can bump up these additional skills that you get granted by items. And speaking of the plus one to skills, there's a couple more items on this list that can also be transferred pretty easily between different PVP builds. First up is the Stone of Jordan. This is most useful or most abused on sorceress builds because of the huge boost to mana. Obviously this ring is good because it has plus one to skills, but that 25% boost to mana actually 
plays a pretty good part on a lot of different builds as well. When you're teleporting around trying to catch other players, mana can become a problem. So instead of necessarily having to rely on mana pots to keep up with people and to deal the damage that you need to, it's good to just have a lot of mana in the first place. That's why a lot of builds prefer this. Additionally, if you don't really have a lot of problems with mana, you could swap this out with a BK or Bull Cathos ring. It also gives you a nice plus one to skills and has a bonus to life based on your character level. So depending on your builds, one of these rings will be just fine for PvP, and most importantly, you can transfer it between many, many different builds. Let's look at the next item, which is Mara's Kaleidoscope. This item gives you plus two to all skills, so it does uh, stack on top of battle orders, and this can roll up to 30% to all resistances. There's a lot of casters in PvP. There's a lot of people that are going to try to attack you through lightning damage, cold damage, fire damage. So it's super important to have your resistances be as high as they can be. For so many reasons, not only is this item really good in your playthroughs or in any character that you make, but it's also very transferable to different builds in PvP. The next item I would consider a temp on most builds, but it's actually pretty good if you never really move on from it. And that is, of course, the Shaco. The Shaco gives that inherent plus two to all skills, again, stacking on top of the Battle Order's pre-buff. And additionally, it has damage reduced by 10%. If we combine that with our Storm Shield, we're at 45% already, almost getting us to the maximum amount of allowed damage reduction in PvP. A lot of different builds aim for those nasty two 20 circlets in their final versions of their builds but I'll tell you that a lot of them will use Shaco first until they get there. To go further, some builds like VTs, Smiters, uh, certain types of Paladins, Hammerdens may actually just settle on the Shaco regardless. Even some ES Sorks will have this be their best in slot item just because of the big boost that it gives you to mana, life, and the plus two to skills, obviously. There's a lot of good things about this helm and it's no surprise that it's highly sought after, not just in PVM, but it's also very transferable in PVP. Next up is Arachnid Mesh. This is a unique spiderweb sash. Not only does it have the plus one to skills, but it's also got a very rare ability for a belt here, and that is 20% uh, extra cast on this belt. This helps a lot of builds hit very important breakpoints. In PvP, you don't really want to go in underprepared. You want to make sure that your breakpoints are, pun intended, on point. You might need to out telly, out run, out cast your opponent and you don't wanna be falling short. You always wanna be at an optimal breakpoint. This is one of the items that applies to various different builds and can really help you reach those breakpoints on a lot of different setups. Very, very good item on a lot of different builds. Next up is Heart of the Oak Flail. Many of you might seek this item out anyway in your PVM builds, but it is also very good on a lot of different builds in PVP. Just about any caster build, when it comes to Druids, Necros, Hammerdens, sorceresses many of these builds have hodo as the best in slot item for their build there's so many good things about this it can roll up to 40 percent to resistances and as we talked about resistances can be super important there are other options that some casters have in this slot but it's really hard to beat that huge boost to resistances the 40 percent extra cast is really good as well again it just helps you sort of min max your build and be ready to hit the maximum break point that you can on a lot of different sets Setups. And of course, it has plus three to skills. That's pretty insane when you consider that this item only requires a Vex rune to build. These next couple of items might be something that you're inevitably going to trade for rather than find, but some of you are super lucky and might have already found them. The first one is Enigma. This is an end game rune word that we are all familiar with. Now, like it or not, no matter what your feelings are about Enigma, in PvP, it actually opens the door for a variety of builds to exist. Whirlwind Barbarians, Wind Druids, Necros, Hammerdens, many of these builds wouldn't really be as top tier as they are without this item. Back in the days of Classic D2, you had a couple of different builds before this item came out and those were the ones that were sort of dominating pvp but when enigma came out like i said it just opened the door for a variety of builds this also contributes to its high demand not just in pvm but in pvp there are certain builds that you just cannot be effective with in pvp without this item and thanks to the shared stash once you get one you can kind of pass it to all of your different builds and uh 
you don't have to keep stacking them up. And you might have the last item on this list if you were in Llama's server pop the other day, and that is, of course, the Annihilus Charm. The reason this is so good is because unlike the Hellfire Torch, this small charm gives plus one to all skills. It doesn't care about what your character class is. This is just a perfect item for a lot of different builds. As you're approaching the end game and you wanna get the highest return with the least amount of spaces in your inventory or least amount of items contributing, this is almost necessary. It can roll up to 20 to all stats and all resistances, and this only takes up a one by one space in your inventory. Much like Enigma, it's not an end all be all to the point where you need it to be able to duel, but it's definitely something you're going to eventually want to either trade for or just hope that D-Clone spawns in your game so that you have the opportunity to get one of these. Again, the beautiful thing is with the shared stash, once you get one, you can kind of easily pass it between characters if you know that you're going to switch. There are a ton of different items in the game that you should look for in PvP, and if you guys find this list useful, let me know down in the comments, and I'm happy to dive into any pieces of PvP that you'd like to know more about. We're also looking at hosting one of the biggest D2R PvP events to be announced soon. So make sure you're following me on Facebook Gaming. Make sure you're in the Discord. Join my club on Arena. We're going to do a couple of different tiers for the people that may be experienced and not experienced in PvP. So it's really going to be an event that is kind of inclusive to everybody. So yeah, hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.